हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पाठशाला आई एम अमिताभ द्विवेदी एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर ऑफ पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इन डी कॉलेज चंडीगढ़ फाइनेंस इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी द लाइफ ब्लड ऑफ ऑल द मोनेटाइज सोशो इकोनॉमिक फॉर्मेशन रेंजिंग फ्रॉम स्मॉल न्यूक्लियर फैमिलीज टू लार्ज नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लाइक गवर्नमेंट however we should not forget that finance is a very very scarce resource and hence has to be used judiciously cautiously and prudently this is more so in case of governments especially in democracies where they require large amount of funds to fund major welfare programs moreover they have to ensure that the monies are used judiciously and are not wasted the instrument through which governments try to achieve their objective is known as budget however modern budgeting has changed a lot from its inception because of various necessities and innovations today it is much more than an accountability document depicting only the figures of income and expenditure today it is an instrument of guiding major welfare programs of the government in fact it is a detailed program guide of the government hence it has to be prepared very cautiously further it is also required that it is it is passed very rigorously so that so that there is no wastage of funds further it has to be executed professionally so that there is never a shortage of funds and all the major programs achieve the purpose for which they are made the main objectives of the module are to understand the importance of budget to understand its underlying principles and objectives and to understand the budgetary process in india literally budget has been derived from the word buge which means a pouch in which the british chancellor for exchequer used to carry the financial documents the word is said to have been started in the year 1733 in a satire entitled opening the budget on the whole document containing the details of receipts and expenditure came to be called as budget different writers have explained the term differently some have defined it as a document containing estimates of income and expenditure while others define it as an authorization to incur expenses and to collect revenues still others have defined it as the quantitative expression of the proposed plan of action thereby it means a document containing the estimates of the income and expenditure of the coming fiscal year of the government on the basis of the details of the past principles of budget the budget if it has to fulfill the purpose for which it has been prepared must be based on certain principles some of the important ones are as follows number 1 balanced budget that is the budget should be as far as possible a balanced one that is the income should match the expenditure if the income is more it is called surplus budget on the other hand if the expenditure is more than the income then it is called deficit budget which is again not recommended number 2 comprehensive the budget should depict the complete health of the government it should show in detail the performance of the various ministries so that everyone knows the correct position and do not grudge in paying taxes further it would also be convenient for the legislature to exercise control in other words 
it should contain all the foreseeable items of income and expenditure. Number three, gross and not net. It should be based on gross income and not net income. In other words, it should show the total income as showing only net income will undermine the accountability of the executive. The gross basis makes the budget realistic and gives the total picture of the department. Further, it also aims at checking the misuse of the funds collected through revenues, etc. Number four, cash basis. It should be prepared on the cash basis, that is, it should depict only those figures which the government expects to realize during the year. If it is not followed, then there is a possibility that the department may find itself in a difficult situation. Number five, unity of budget. There should be only one budget of the government as multiple budgets will undermine the simplicity aspect. We should not forget that the budget is primarily made for the consumption of the legislature and the common man, both of whom are non-technical people and multiplicity of budgets will add to their confusion. Number six, clarity and simplicity. Related with the above point is that the budget should be clear and simple to understand. Only then it will serve the purpose for which it has been made. The makers of the budget must know that the document is not for their understanding, but for those to whom they are accountable. Number seven, publicity. Publicity is considered to be an important element of a good budget. It is this principle which makes budget reach the masses whose lives it is going to affect. Moreover, the citizens are considered to be the rulers in a democracy. And so they have every right to know the expenditure of the government. Types of budget. Budget has a long historical past and the modern government budgeting is the result of long evolutionary process. As such, different types of them have been used depending upon the purpose, need, time period, financial position of the government, focus on achievements, etc. Some of the main types are as follows. Number one, annual and long-term budget. When the budget is prepared for one year, which is generally known as a financial year, it is called annual budget. On the other hand, if it is for more than one year, then it is called long-term budget. However, the common trend is to make budget on annual basis. Number two, surplus balanced and deficit budget. If the income of the government is shown to be more than its expenditure, then it is called surplus budget. However, this is not recommended specially in a welfare state as it gives an impression that the government is not doing enough for the betterment of its citizens. When the income and expenditure of the government match each other, it is called balanced budget. However, it is very difficult to achieve. The third situation is when the expenditure of the government is more than its income. It is called deficit budget. It is the most common type and is seen positively, yet large scale deficit is considered as inefficiency of the government as it gives rise to inflationary tendencies. Number three, cash and revenue budget. If the amount is shown in, if the amount which is shown in the budget is going to be real, realized in the financial year, then it is called as cash budget. But if the amount accruing in one financial year shown in the budget may not be realized in that year, then it is called a revenue budget. Fourth, legislative type. In this type, the legislature itself shoulders the responsibility of making the budget. Then it, this it does with the help of committees made from amongst its members and passes it and then gives it to the executive for implementation. However, this is not recommended as the legislature is not competent to assess 
the requirements of different departments. As such, budget will not be realistic enough to meet the goals and objectives. Number 5. Executive Budget When the executive is entrusted with duty of making the budget, it is called the executive budget. However, this should not be construed as dominance of the executive. Rather, it should be seen as a step in making the budget realistic since executive is in a better position to make the estimates. In this type, generally, the budget making and execution is the responsibility of the executive. However, it has to obtain the section of legislature before execution. Number 6. Line item budget. It is also known as traditional budget. In this type, all the items and corresponding expenditure is shown in separate lines and the legislature either approves or disapproves the individual items. Once approved, no alteration in any of the two is allowed, howsoever small it may be. Moreover, no significance is attached to the achievements and performance. Number 7. Lump Sum Budgeting It is also in this type, the executive is given the discretion to not only shift the expenditure from one head to another, but it, it but is also given the freedom to change or shift the amount from one organization to another. Advocates of this type put forward the idea that this makes the executive to use funds more judiciously. Number 8. Performance Budget Performance budgeting is generally understood as a system of presentation of public expenditure in terms of functions, programs, performance units reflecting primarily the governmental output and its cost. The main emphasis of performance budgeting is on development, developing management tools such as work measurement, performance standards, etc. with a view to improve the performance of the management by relating output to the cost. The main steps in the performance budgeting are classification of public expenditure in terms of functions, sub-functions, programs, projects, etc., the establishment, improvement and extension of activity schedules for all measurable, measurable items of the government, the establishment of work output, employee utilization, standard or unit costs by objective methods and the creation of related cost and performance recording and reporting system. And lastly, zero-based budget. Developed by Peter A. Fir in 1970, this type of budget gained popularity during the regime of Jimmy Carter who adopted it for all federal government agencies in 1979. The basic idea behind this type is to divide all the programs into packages composed of goals and activities and the requisite resources and then to calculate individual costs. By starting with the base zero, costs are circulated afresh for every package every year. Characteristics of Indian Budgetary System India being one of the oldest civilizations also possess one of the oldest administrative systems. As such, it also has one of the oldest budgetary systems. However, the present day budgetary process is the legacy of the British. As such, even after independence, the basic traits of Government of India Act 1935 were retained. However, necessary changes were made keeping in mind the national commitments and values. Article 112 to 117 of the Indian Constitution deal with budget. According to Article 112, the budget in India is called the Annual Financial Statement, which has to be made and passed by the legislature before the end of the financial year, that is 31st March. Before discussing the budgetary process, we must discuss its features for a better understanding. Number 1. There are three funds for the government transactions. Number, the first one is 
Consolidated Fund of India, Article 266. According to this article, whole or part of the net proceed of revenues of the states, all revenues received by the government of India, all loans raised by that government by the issue of treasury bills, loans or by way and means advances and all money received by the government in repayment of loans shall form part of consolidated fund. Contingency fund, article 267. According to this, the parliament may by law establish a constitu const contingency fund into which shall be paid from time to time such sums as may be determined by such law and such fund shall be placed at the disposal of the president. Public accounts. Article 266 sub clause 2 says that all other money received by or on behalf of the government of India shall be credited to the public account of India. Two budgets. In India, in order to make budget manageable, it is presented in two parts, namely general and railway budget. Number three, appropriation and finance bill. Appropriation bill, Article 111, sub 100, Article 114, sub clause 3, contains all the voted expenditure, that is the expenditure passed by the parliament. Finance bill contains all the proposals to raise income to meet the expenditure. This includes the taxes and the new tax proposals. Two parts of the budget. The budget consists of two parts, namely capital budget, which consists of capital receipts and payments such as market loans, borrowing for, borrowings from RBI and loans from foreign governments, etc. Revenue budget, this consists, consists of revenue receipts such as tax and other revenues and expenditure met out of these revenues. Number five, two heads of expenditure. All the expenditure put under consolidated fund is not subject to vote in the legislature. This includes all the expenses to meet the con constitutional obligations such as salaries of the constitutional authorities meeting the expenses of the constitutional ex institutions this includes all the money required to meet all the expenditure proposed to be made from consolidated fund. It is this part which is discussed and put to vote in parliament. Number seven, financial year. In India, the financial year starts from 1st April and ends on 31st March. It is part of the legacy which we have inherited from the British. This is this, despite the fact that in Indian tradition, it starts from Deepavali. The experts also feel that Deepavali is best suited as we clearly know the outcome of the monsoon. Moreover, during monsoon, we get ample time for preparation, which suffers now due to implementation process. Number eight, rule of lapse. It is a principle which states that the money which remains unutilized should be deposited back in the treasury. It can be retained for future use. However, this has given rise to another phenomena known as rush of expenditure as the departments make reckless spending to use the money out of the fear that if they re return the money back, there will be cut in their next year's budget. And lastly, guillotine. It is a name given to a process in which the speaker puts all the demands which have not been used to vote on the last day of allotted period. Number six, vote on account and vote on credit. Vote on account, Article 116, subclause A, is a method through which government can get money in case the budget cannot be passed before 31st March. Vote on credit, Article 100 and 116, subclause B, states that it is a money granted by the Lok Sabha for meeting an unexpected demand 
when because of its magnitude or indefinite character, the demand cannot be stated in definite terms. Budget cycle in India. There are three, three stages of the budgetary process in India, namely budget preparation, budget enactment and budget execution. Now we shall discuss each one of them one by one. Budget preparation. The budget preparation can be discussed under following heads. Number one, preparation of preliminary estimates by drawing and disbursing officers. Even though the budget estimates are presented before the legislature in the month of February, yet the process starts sometimes in the month of August or September. It is in these months that the budget, budget division of the Division of Department of Economic Affairs, Ministry of Finance, sends the skeleton forms to the administrative ministries and heads of departments for distribution among DDOs. The main reason for this is the common principle that he who spends the money should prepare the estimates as he knows the details. Along with the forms, certain directions are also sent which are in the forms of guidelines. This, this is to ensure uniformity among the filling of estimates. Second, scrutiny and review by controlling officers. After filling up the forms, the DDOs send the forms to their respective heads that are called controlling officers. The controlling officers are required to collect all the forms related with their department and analyze the relative importance of the proposals and give his remarks in the prescribed column. He has the authority to modify the proposals if he thinks fit. The main point behind the review is to ensure that the estimates are in tune with the policy of the department. Number three, scrutiny and review by controller of accounts. By the end of October, the, the form one goes to the CGA for factual verification regarding the accuracy of estimates. After the necessary action, it goes to the Ministry of Finance. Scrutiny and review and consolidation by Ministry of Finance. The budget estimate prepared by different ministries are received by the Ministry of Finance. One subject of scrutiny and review by it is taking into account the economic aspects so as to map them within the estimates of revenue for the period. This may result in disputes between the administrative ministry and ministry of finance which if not resolved goes to the cabinet for final solution. The ministry of finance generally follows three pronged stra strategy for review. It gives least scrutiny in case of fixed charges, fixed charges like pay and allowance, the continuing schemes are subject to scrutiny in relation to their evaluation of performance and progress level reached and a strict scrutiny is in, is in respect to the new schemes in terms of their importance, need, urgency, expenditure involved. Budget enactment process in India. After the budget has been fully approved by the cabinet, it is ready for submission to the parliament for legislative authorization. In all parliamentary democracies, the budget, after having been prepared by the executive, is presented to the legislature for its approval. This is because of the simple principle that no tax can be levied and no expenditure incurred without the prior sanction of the parliament. The budget is presented to the legislature on, the beha on behalf of the ex chief executive by the finance minister. This is so because he is associated with the preparation of the budget and as such is able to facilitate its smooth passage. In India, the passage of the budget enactment process involves the following stages. Number one, presentation to the legislature. According to Article 112 of the Constitution, it is the duty of the president to present the budget of the Union before both the Houses of Parliament. It says that he shall lay before both the Houses 
a statement of estimates and expenditure of the government of India known as an annual financial statement. This statement shows the sums charged on consolidated fund of India and sums required to meet other expenditure. It is a convention that the presentation of general budget takes place on the last working day of February. Before presentation, the Minister of Finance makes a customary speech, which is popularly known as the budget speech. This speech is in two parts, namely the general economic survey and the taxation proposals, which is also known as the finance bill. This bill is introduced soon after the conclusion of the speech by the finance minister. Number two, general discussion. As per the rules for the conduct of business in the parliament, no discussion takes place on the day the budget is presented. On a day fixed by the speaker, the discussion takes place, which is known as general discussion. Generally, it is after a week of presentation of the budget. This time is given to enable, it, enable the members to study the budget. As the name suggests, during the general discussion, the discussion is confined to a discussion on the principles, of, principles or policy underlying the budget. It is confined to general examination of policy of taxation. To be specific, the members are allowed to make observations about the general scheme of the budget, that is, consideration of revenue surpluses and deficits. They are not allowed to raise any specific grievances. It is considered as an occasion for each house to express its mood. Number three, demand for grants. This is the next stage in the journey of the budget through the parliament. Although they are called demands, but they are in the nature of request by the executive to the Lok Sabha and are related with the expenditure part of the budget. Firstly, it is the voting on grants not chargeable on consolidated, of, consolidated Fund of India, which is brought before the House. The demand for grants are brought up ministry-wise, but the finance minister can include in one demand grants proposed for two or more ministries. Voting on demand is the exclusive privilege of the Lok Sabha. It examines the estimates thoroughly and critically before passing ordinarily. If the discussion remains incomplete, the demands are passed without discussion on the last day of the budget session. This is known as guillotine. It may, however, be made clear that while the parliament has the power to discuss the demand in detail, yet it cannot increase the amount. It has power only to decrease it through the process of cut motions. The cut motions used in Indian parliament are three, three in number, namely token cut, which is introduced if the mover feels that some part of the demand is excessive. In this case, he moves a motion to reduce a demand by rupees 100. It is symbolic in nature to vent specific type of grievance. Number two, economy cut. When the mover feels that the total demands is excessive in nature and thus moves a motion for a specific cut in the total demand of the ministry. Number three, policy cut which can be moved if the member feels that the ministry is not saving any worthwhile per policy cut, which can be moved if the member feels that the ministry is not serving any worthwhile purpose and so it should be closed. For this, he moves the motion for reducing the total demand to rupee 1. The next stage is considering and passing of appropriation bill. The mere voting on the demands does not empower the government to spend money. Moreover, by the end of the voting, there are a number of addition and subtraction in the expenditure side, so the government prepares another bill carrying only the voted demand. This bill is known as Appropriation Bill. This bill is introduced in Lok Sabha 
and its passing is like any other bill except that no changes can be made to the bill as all the demands are already discussed by the house and the last stage in the passing of the passing of budget in the lok sabha is the passing of finance bill the budgetary process remains incomplete even if parliamentary authorization is given to withdraw the money this is until it considers the ways and means to raise the revenue to meet expenditure in other words it has to consider the second aspect namely the income part of the budget this is done by considering and passing the finance bill which is introduced at the time of the presentation of the bill a finance bill is defined as a bill ordinarily introduced every year to give effect to financial proposals of the government for the following year and includes the bill to give effect to the supplementary financial proposals for any period this includes all the taxation proposals either new or existing after passing after the budget is passed in the lok sabha it goes to the rajya sabha however it has only limited functions to perform because it has no power either to introduce amendments or rejections it can only discuss it and return it back to the lok sabha within a period of 14 days from the receipt of the bill if it does if it does not do so it is assumed that it has passed it the last stage of budgetary cycle is budget execution after the budget is passed by the legislature the next important step is to execute it however it must be remembered that the budget must be executed keeping in view the spirit in which it has been passed it should carry the will of the parliament the execution of budget is a highly centralized phenomena with ministry of finance enjoying a preeminent pre position the main stages in execution of the budget are execution of the expenditure side after the budget is passed it is now the turn of ministry of finance to start the process of its execution it is in a way it is reverse of the process of the budget preparation the main steps in this process are as follows number 1 communication by ministry of finance to the individual ministries of their voted money number 2 communication by the controlling officers to the ddos and number 3 start of expenditure by the ddos by opening accounts with the treasuries with regard to execution of the income part it is the responsibility of ministry of finance and department of revenue to be specific The Department of Revenue executes the responsibility with the help of Central Board of Direct Taxes and Central Board of Excise and Customs. The department is expected to ensure that there is proper collection, custody and distribution of funds. So to conclude, we can say that India possesses one of the most detailed and elaborate mechanisms of budgeting. This it has achieved through evolution and innovation it can it contains all the necessary rules and regulations to have an effective control however what we lack is the political will it has been seen that the executive due to its majority in the legislature is able to get pass everything contained in the budget this undermines all the rules and regulations and the control becomes ineffective so what is needed is to sharpen this control mechanism through effective cost control physical transparency change in the attitude of ministry of finance proper discharge of funds and put a check putting a check on rush of expenditure in which departments and ministries make huge spending in the last months of uh, the financial year above all what is required is financial integrity self discipline and high moral standards only then 
we can ensure that the budget is able to attain the objectives which have been made with so much pain. Thank you.